totally done in now. Absolutely wrecked. Imagine having the perfect marathon training block. No injury, no illness, a perfect mix of long runs and VO2 max sessions, a clear progression in fitness, speed and endurance. And then imagine executing the perfect race and having the best marathon experience of your life. Where do you go from there? We've arrived in Blackheath. Uh, we're walking up the hill. The big question is, do I stop at Costa for a coffee or do I just carry on? It is very early, it's about quarter to nine. I don't start until 10 o'clock. In 2023, I ran a marathon PB in Paris and told myself I was capable of more. I was full of confidence, buoyed by a dream 12 weeks of training that had got me to the best shape I'd ever been in. I vowed that next year I would train harder, do more miles, more strength work, faster intervals and beat my PB again. Bag dropped in. It is freezing. It is really cold but uh, we'll cope. Don't know whether I should have worn my sunglasses or not, but I've gone without the sunglasses today. Fast forward to April 2024 and the start line of the London Marathon. My training block decimated by a series of colds and flu-like illnesses such that I can't even call it a training block. My confidence dented and run allies predicting a finish time some 30 minutes slower than I'd originally hoped. Welcome to Film My Run. We're doing the London Marathon for the sixth time. Uh, we're in yellow start today. We're going to enjoy the sunshine. I'm going to do the best time we possibly can, given the fitness that we've got. Here we go. I crossed the start line and watched my clubmate Penny disappear into the distance as I reined in the urge to throw caution to the wind and follow her. I know what level I'm at and pretending it's anything better or that I can wing it or pull off a miracle is effectively marathon suicide. I'm trying to control the pace early on. Two miles in. And uh, yeah, just trying to keep it at 440 per kilometre. Around about there anyway. So as I'm sure you know, London Marathon starts in lots of different start points. So red, blue, green, yellow and this is the first time I've done this part of the route. Normally, I'm over here. So we're now joining up with some of the other waves. And then, yeah, it's the first time I've come down here. Five kilometers done in 23 minutes and 10 seconds. Sticking to around 440 per K. Here we go, 5K here. So my watch ticked over a couple of seconds early. And you notice the other side of the road, they're not quite at 5K yet here. And they're gonna go round the roundabout the long way to make up the distance. Just passing 10K in 46 minutes, 30 seconds or so. There we go. And we're just coming up to Cutty Sark now. Feeling all right, not great, but still sticking to the pace. So one of the iconic moments of the London Marathon is running past the Cotty Sark just after 10K, here we are. Despite my lack of fitness and the disappointment of not being able to attempt a PB, I'm always grateful for the opportunity to run the London Marathon and for experiences like this. These are special, life-enriching, memory-forging moments and you have to drink them in and bank them forever. Just crossing 15 kilometres in one hour, 10 minutes. Oh, well we are making progress. Still sticking to the 440 per kilometre pace. Relatively relaxed, although I'm not feeling like I want to speed up in the second half, that's for sure. My plan had been to run a controlled 20 miles and then perhaps speed up in the final 10K if I felt strong enough. 10 miles in one hour, 15, 30 seconds. Just a park run to go to halfway. I was really enjoying myself. The crowds were amazing and Rotherhide is always a great spot. 
Physically, I wasn't feeling quite as comfortable as I would have liked, but I was sticking like glue to my pacing strategy. This guy is such a square! Well done, buddy. Twenty kilometres in one thirty-three, and crossing Tower Bridge, of course. Okay, so the lead runners are just coming past on the other side. We are about to hit halfway. One thirty-eight fifty for halfway. Lead runners just coming past. It's exciting, isn't it? 1 hour 57 minutes and 30 seconds for 25k. Had a toilet stop under the tunnel. GPS has gone a bit crazy, but uh, we'll get back on it now. I was annoyed that I'd had to stop because I knew my beautiful even line of kilometre splits would be messed up on Strava. And I think perhaps this is where things started to fall apart. Then I met my wife Victoria at 18 miles, but she wasn't ready for me. So I had to stop again to wait for my banana and coke. 30 kilometres in two hours, 21 minutes to Canary Wharf. Twenty miles done in two hours, thirty-one minutes, ten k to go. Hitting the wall at twenty miles is such a cliche. I always tell people that the wall does not exist. If you've done the training and your head is in the right place, then there's no such thing as a wall at twenty miles. And yet here I was bonking in the last ten k. My motivation for any specific time was out of the window. My energy levels were at rock bottom and my legs were giving up. 2 hours 45, 35k in, 7k to go. I have dropped off the pace now though. Barely doing 5 minute kilometres now. Quite tired, very tired. Tower of London. 22 and a half miles. But I've gone now. Legs have gone. Thirty-eight K. Three hours and thirty seconds. Four K to go. I was trying to follow the blue line to make the distance to the end as short as possible. I kept trying to console myself by reminding my brain that I'm not fit. This was no longer an A race. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm really hurting now. I'm so tired. Totally done in now. Absolutely wrecked. However I tried to spin it, it still hurt. Physically and emotionally to feel every other runner coming past and to see every kilometre slower than the last. 3 hours 11 minutes and 40 seconds at 40k. I am completely dead. Nothing left. 2k to go. As I jogged in those final two kilometres, I thought back to all those lost days in January and February. Days when I should have been out training hard, putting in the miles. It is unfortunate that I was unwell, but maybe if I'd looked after my diet and sleep a bit better, I might not have fallen ill in the first place. There's no good or bad luck in marathon running. There's always a reason why you haven't performed on the day. I got out exactly what I put in. I got what I deserved. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is what it is. It's been really hard going the last 10k, as is often the case. But we're there now, just passing Buckingham Palace. 300 metres to go. Let me know in the comments below how you got on at this year's London Marathon. Please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you've never run the London Marathon, I really hope you get to experience it one day. 
because running down the mile to the finish line will be one of the proudest moments of your life. London Marathon 2024 is done. Running page, well done, son. 323.52 ish, about the same as two years ago. Hello, thank you so much. Thank you.